from Little Rock. Here's the question. I can max out my 401k in Q1 this year. Would it be wise to put all of my earnings to 401k to max it out quickly or just stick to 10% and let it max out over the year? Well, here's the big deal with that, Rick, when deciding how quickly to max out your 401k during the calendar year is do you have a match? Because yeah. if you have a match, it, we got a different way of looking at this. Absolutely. And this is a game changer. Yeah. Uh, y'all, I, I can't tell you how many times people do, especially if they have some variable income. If you're in sales, for example, and you have commissions that you can't really predict what you're going to make, a lot of times people will max out their contributions before the end of the year, and they don't realize what they're missing uh, in, in that scenario. So let's go through an example here. Let's say that somebody has a salary of a hundred thousand dollars and they're 50 years old so they're old enough to be able to do catch-up contributions and all of that so thirty thousand dollars in q1 the employer matches dollar for dollar up to six percent so that's fifteen hundred dollars in matching money in q1 but no more for the rest of the year where if we had stretched out those contributions throughout the entire year, it would be $6,000 for the year. So that's $4,500 of difference just in that one calendar year. Now, if we do that for 15 years, so we get this 50-year-old to 65, over 15 years, just in free money with no growth on it, that's $67,500 of missed match money. Hmm. That's a huge difference. And if you assume just a 6% growth over that 15 years, that's $115,545. It is important to stretch your contributions out throughout the entire year. Yeah. And let me, and let me take just a second to talk to employers too, because this is a, this is a way bigger of a headache than I think it needs to be. You know, I never realized until I got into uh, the financial services industry, what a big difference it makes, the fact that there's a discrepancy between the what the IRS, how the IRS limits your contributions into employer plans and how the employer who runs those plans mm-hmm. sets it up, right? Because you have to determine a percentage of your income that goes in on a systematic basis into that plan, the IRS sees it as a number, right? And we use 30000 I actually looked it up before we went on the air. It's going up a little bit. It's Mm -hmm. $30,500. If you're over 50 this year, uh, you'd be able to put that much into your plan. But you have to do the math to figure out how do you divide that out percentage-wise as a percentage of your income to reach that $30,000. So just a I guess a shout out or maybe just a a request for employers. I I don't know how hard this is. I know bigger companies is probably darn near impossible. I don't know what kind of pressure it puts on payroll to try to figure this out. But if you're a small employer, especially set it up like, you know, here we have a simple IRA and we are allowed to say, I go into Tim and I say, I want to max out my simple IRA and he divides it out over 12 times and we're good right yeah it doesn't it doesn't it's not a part it's not a percentage of my income and, and I'll say because I've sat in that chair from the business owner's perspective and I, and I know what our finance department um, has to do in the type of plan that we have and how our payroll is set up it's really not that complicated I mean they're going to set it up either as a percentage amount or they're going to set it up as a set dollar amount they've got to they've got to go in there and type something in anyway so if you want it to be so so that it is even, let's say you were going to contribute $24,000 because that's super easy math. That's $2,000 per month, or if you're paid twice a month, that's $1,000 per paycheck. Be careful if it's bi-weekly. Keep in mind that that's 26 pay periods in a year's time instead of 24. But think through how do you make it a set dollar amount and still reach whatever your total goal is, whether you're maxing out full contributions or what whatever amount you still want to stretch those out throughout the calendar year it's very important yeah i have and transversely the other side of that equation in our household is is my wife sarah's job she is in a little has a little bit of veritable comp she's in a little bit of a sales position and she gets uh, bonuses at least a couple of times a year so mm-hmm. there's that variance requires us because her employer requires her to put in 
her 401k contributions as a percentage of income, I have to change it like three times. We have to change it like three times a year yeah. to try to, you know, hit play hit the game, the, play the game. <laughs> yeah. So we, we make sure that we're going to uh, get all of the match money. So it is a difficult thing, but it's something yeah. for on the employee side, I would certainly recommend you want to make sure that you're doing mm-hmm. uh, because uh, look at the numbers, look at what we just showed you that it can make a huge difference in your overall savings at the end of your work life. Well, and that was just from a 50-year-old, from from age 50 to 65. Think about yeah. it over a career. Yeah. Y'all, it is, it's a huge game changer for people if they'll really pay attention to this. And Scott, I can't tell you how many times we have sat in client meeting rooms and had this conversation when we see a statement from a 401k or their pay stubs and we realize what they've been doing Mm -hmm. is maxing it out earlier and they really have no idea in most cases the impact that it makes. Yeah, I would uh, say congratulations to Rick for looking to max out that 401k. That is a game changer. That catch up is not just a... uh, word that should be thrown around lightly it truly does once you're 50 years old allow you to catch up if you are behind on retirement savings Uh, there's a lot you can get in there if you're willing to have the discipline to do it and it can be a tax advantage too because obviously those dollars we're assuming he's talking about a pre-tax 401k there are Roth 401ks but he didn't say that so in a traditional 401k you're putting those dollars in before they are taxed so you're lowering your taxable income and if you're maxing out with thirty thousand dollars that's a significant lowering of your taxable income so it's an advantage now and a huge advantage later Thanks to Rick for that question. A reminder, if you've got questions, call or text them to us at 501-381-5228 or send us an email. Send it to show at getreadyforthefuture.com.